All right. Hello again. It's it's been a solid few months since I've played IRPG at all, and I got kind of bored today, and I figured I'd try making another guide video since it's been a solid few months since I uploaded the first one or the remake of the first one to YouTube. And if I remember right, a solid few people have actually joined the IRPG Discord server from that video, which is kind of <laughs> insane to me. Um, so this is where I reached in that video. Um, obviously I have, well I guess it's not obvious if you didn't watch it, but I have recovery necklace as well because I got ridiculously lucky and kind of just happened to get that, but for the sake of demonstration I'm not going to use it um, until the point in the game and the point in the guide series where farming recovery would happen. And I'm still going to obviously show a couple example runs of that when the time comes, but that's a few videos away and god knows if I'll ever get that far. So the first run is done and we have some stuff from gold farming, which we did a bit of on run one. Uh, have an iron axe, scale armor, and a couple luck gems and an HP gem plus one. Only one set, only three accessory slots because there's only really so much you can do on run on run one. I can't speak English. Um, so yeah, getting started into the next run, it's good to just like take risks that seem really stupid. Like it's it's really okay. Like it's like oh, this is 25 times the zone level that I started last run in. Like it's probably gonna be dangerous, right? No, not really. You like the. Upgrades to weapons, armor, accessories are very big early in the game. And especially at the very start, your second run will usually start off way quicker than the first. So this is an actual, what, it, what feels like an actual big risk here. But no, I'm actually fine. I take like a fifth of my max health. Like I win the fight with 80% of my health left. And starting half attack half defense all HP to give attack half my stat points and quarters each to HP and defense. Went over that in the last video. I'm gonna try 710, I know that, okay, this is too dangerous. Uh, I'm not gonna, how am I, okay, yeah, that was, that would've been stupid if I won that. Please don't die, please don't, okay. Um, I'm not gonna bother resetting. I'll just continue the run. So, I die in there, but like the structure of this run is I'm gonna have to kill Panda and then move into desert. Um, also, I'm gonna have a little bit of game audio on so that it doesn't sound like going completely insane. You know, just go crazy after long enough just sitting, playing this game, talking to pretty much myself, and just having no sign other than my own voice. It's, <laughs> it's really weird. Um, so after this few fights in here, I'm gonna try fighting in here again. Like, just to check, do I have anything that could be better for this? I don't think I do, but do I? If I happen to, I don't seem to. Do I have any other gems for any other stats? No, I don't. Do I have any XP gems by any chance? No, I don't. Do I have anything else other than this? No, not really. I have two battle point rings, but those are nowhere near useful yet at this point in the run. And try again in here. And yeah, this is gonna work. I'm gonna win this fight. This fight felt so slow, actually. Really? Okay. Everything seems fine. Um, so a big part of, like, runs and from pretty much the second run of your save all the way to the end of the game is a lot of the time you're just improvising. Um, comprehensive guidance for, like, runs for every, like, target farm with every set of, of gear just don't exist, so... You'll basically always have to figure out at least something yourself, with the very specific exceptions of your first run of the sieve and some endgame stuff. Although even that is kind of, you can adjust stats and stuff a bit that you go into places in based on your gear, but like, nobody can hold your hand through every run of the game. I mean, like, the best- oh my god, my throat. The best anyone could do is, like, sit in a voice call with you, or, I guess, in person, 
and just like kind of play f play for you almost and just say hmm I think you'll be fine if you go into this zone here but like, at that point you're kind of not even playing the game like just like don't be afraid to like just die randomly to something stupid there's basically never a lot on the line on a run so if you die I mean if you really want to keep your play count low and get through the game in as little play count as possible if you have a silly death or something, you can just reset the run. I'm actually going to get a battle axe there. That might be useful. Um, 1333 has a few weapon drops, one of which is the battle axe. And yeah, 1400 and 135% all the way up to 5k and 145%. And the game asks me to read it. Actually, um, that reminds me of something kind of notable. So I only have one daily bonus per game currently, and that is because... Um, of a thing that happens when the game gets updated, which it did uh, about a month ago on the 11th of November or some day like that, about a month ago, because there was some bug that was complete that was rendering everyone's game completely unplayable. Like nobody could, like people were getting soft locked basically on the um, select difficulty screen. The game was just freezing, and nobody, or not nobody, but a lot of people were just unable to play the game past that screen, which can't really do much if you can't get past the difficulty selection screen. Can't really play the game uh, in a very fun or enjoyable way. Um, so when the game gets updated, uh, for some reason, the uh, the tweet function that gives you an extra daily bonus per day from 5 up to 6, that remains, that stays. You don't have to do that again, but you'll have to hit the reading button again to get back your second daily bonus per game. Uh, so this is a triple exclamation mark bonus, which is um, for black bonus area. So this is just a random shadow, right? And I kill it and I get 6,000 gold. Um, if you see it on your first ever run, it might be useful for like 6,000 gold isn't bad at the very, very, very start of the save, but um, bonus areas are something that you come on to a decent bit later, but for now, don't really pay any attention to um, triple exclamation mark or single exclamation mark bonuses. They're just not that important. And while there's XP times two in here, I might as well sit in here because now with this couple of gear upgrades, I can pretty comfortably get a run. Oh, it feels so laggy. I can pretty comfortably get a run into here. Um, which I'm not sure if I managed to do in the first video, but I'll try now. With all this extra improvement to my gear, yeah, I have 16 BP left and I'm already able to sit in here and live. And 20, being able to survive in 2222 is pretty important because it gives a lot of gold. Like, a lot. For the, for the point in the game that this zone exists at, it's like... It's basically like robbing a bank. <laughs> like, this is the gold farming zone early on. And you can access it really, really early, which makes it really helpful. So now that I can kill things in here, now that I've kind of reached the stats I need to survive in my target zone, I'm basically just going to stat all luck for the rest of the run. Because, I mean, you don't really need to stat more attack, HP, defense, if there's nothing harder in the run that you're going to need to kill. Or that you're going to need to kill. Kind of trailed off there for no reason. Um, now, what we're doing for these next few runs is kind of just farming gold. And getting a bunch of useful things. Um, you can... You can um, get on further in the game with a whole lot less gold farming than I'm going to be doing here, but honestly, even when I'm not just producing guides or whatever, this is how I basically always play through early game. I just get all the kind of stuff I consider like basics, just really useful stuff that you can purchase with gold, and then I move on past desert. Uh, and It's really easy to get a lot of really useful stuff that can only be bought with gold. Um, once you can get in here, because this zone really does give a great amount of money. So, I mean, you can see this no money times anything bonus, and I get 10,000 from one mob. 
with, I mean, a thousand or so luck. Oh, I might die on this fight. So this is uh, question marks group B. And yeah, that's the strongest enemy out of that group. Um, yeah, question marks are really inconsistent and early on enough they can sometimes be pretty scary, but I mean, what you have to lose is 3 BP and what you have to gain from getting the right enemy that you can kill is a whole lot of gold, so I think it's still worth it really. Uh, and I'm gonna use a daily bonus here to try to get some good money bonuses, but all I get is XP times 2 in 2222. That's not the end of the world. This run, honestly, for gold farming purposes, isn't going great. Um, so I've got a notepad dock up here, a TXT with kind of all the stuff that I I would consider pretty important to get uh, from gold farming before moving on, or at least all the stuff that I would 100% get myself and that I'm going to be getting in this. So, yeah, you've got you want all the first six accessory slots, so you want all six of these to be open. Um, they skill and cost like kind of fast, but it's not that hard, even to get 750k on just a good enough gold run. Um, I'm actually going to kill Sphinx here. If I die, I'm going to look like a real idiot. But I'm going to kill Sphinx here because um, Sphinx gives a lot of VP. I think it's like six extra VP, so that's saying that I'll finish with 9 after this fight. Yeah, it gives 7 MP, but obviously you lose 1 to fight the enemy, so I come out with 9. And I'll use the daily money bonus. They're basically never useful past your first run, where 5k is a lot at the very start. Um, the things that you'll absolutely want to be in 22 for, like compared to any other gold farming zone that you could find, say, is Trident and Magic Armor. So Trident is a pretty good weapon. Uh, drops from this enemy, actually. Uh, only this enemy uh, in 2222. There is another enemy in another zone that Trident can drop from, but... Oh, nice. Um, I just prefer to get it here before moving on. Um, it's a pretty decent weapon upgrade, even compared to any of the stuff you can get in 1333, which has a few weapons already. Uh, and then armor-wise, you want magic armor, which drops from the enemy I just killed, along with one other. So magic armor drops from two other enemies and doesn't drop anywhere else in the game. And I've got here, uh, kind of snip that out before starting recording, basically all the information of the enemies in this zone that can drop trident or magic armor. And you've got little tables here for minimum and maximum drop rates and at certain like benchmarks of luck. Um, so this is minimum is basically at one luck always. Like it just shows the drop rate of the item if you are, tr are trying to get it with one total luck. Um, and then here's a drop rate for if you have 2000, then 25, 300, 500, 1 mil. And then you've got the max drop rate, which isn't always equal to any of the other like numbers on here. It's just that early on, um, so every item has a max drop rate that it'll cap out on if you reach enough luck. Early on in the game those are pretty low and especially if you're coming back to earlier farms with later on gear, like with end game gear, I'll, you can probably reach, like you can definitely reach the maximum uh, drop rate. Oh on any item on screen right now. Um, later on, not so much. Uh, some later on items have, I believe, uh, wing plus one gear, the final stuff in the game has uh, luck caps for its max drop rate of like a couple billion or something. Like most caps are completely unreachable and you should never really worry about them because a good philosophy to have with luck is have some when you're killing something you want to drop from, but don't overdo it. Like, unless you're able to just completely steamroll whatever you're farming, don't use a two luck character. As in, don't use a character on the like far right column that'll have an like a higher 
bonus to luck than, say, Orange Hair will. Um, it's just not worth the loss of, like, the EHP that will make the runs basically harder to finish. You'll still be able to finish them, unless it's something really tight and optimized. But just the extra time it takes to finish a more difficult run isn't all, is basically never worth the drop rate that you gain. So like, and then that same kind of principle applies to statting extra luck before killing, say, a boss that you want to drop from. Um, say if you were farming, like, if if like Sphinx, the boss that's normally in here, until obviously I killed him, if he had a useful drop that I wanted, I would just get to the point I can kill him, have a set with some luck stuff on it, and then kill him. But if I sat around and statted a bunch of luck, say that takes five minutes, right? Say I sit around until like one BP for f and just build up luck before I kill him, and that takes five extra minutes. That would probably like double the drop rate of the item, which sounds pretty good, but the thing is you're trading that off for like tripling the runtime because Sph Sphinx you can get to really really fast. So you can probably kill him in only a few minutes. Like I mean, if you have any gear from farther on, like, it takes probably about 20 seconds. So, I mean, you could be getting 10 times as long of runs for, like, double the drop rate. Which just isn't worth it, when you think about it. You'd, like, you'd generally rather more tries, and then just have a set with luck stuff and then just kill whatever you're farming on that. Now, if you're sitting in one spot and just farming normal mobs, then you're fine. You can just, as soon as you can survive in there, like in these runs, as soon as you can survive in the zone you're farming, I'm waiting for a video ad, as soon as you can survive in the zone you're farming, then you can just start statting a bunch of luck. Um, anyway, I'll just get on with the next run, I guess. So into this next run, I forgot to change HP gem plus one. Um, because I have the Battle Axe, which is such a big attack upgrade over Iron Axe, like I have four times the damage, uh, I'm going to try sitting in just 300 for my first bite. And yeah, that's completely free. Like, I destroyed that. So, with all that extra attack, I think I should be able to sit in here and live, because last run when I died in here at the same kind of level, it was pretty close. And yeah, again, this is the thing. with more and more gear, you get to breeze through more and more of the game, and it's pretty fun in that sense. Like, that's always been kind of one of my favorite things about IRPG. Like, the better gear you have, the faster you can go, and that's bronze armor from Panda. Panda um, doesn't have very useful drops. Um, oh, I'm looking at weapons for an armor, and yeah, 125%, 200 defense. I already have something better than that, so there's no real point in that. Uh, I have just gone on about, what, like, 20 years of tangents there, so some other stuff you'll want from gold farm runs, uh, you'll want a second set slot, so that's, if this is what your equipment screen looks like, click this, or tap that, I suppose, if you're on mobile, and you can select set to, so it says you can unlock this slot for 300,000 gold, and I'll... I'll, I guess, show what that does when we get there, so I'll unlock that next. Um, in terms of other, like, items you want, um, you're gonna want three encounter reduction rings. Only... this stuff is only worth buying after you actually get set to. Um, the three XP gem plus ones, um, you can pretty much use immediately. And this stuff, I would get, but not everyone might want to. So that's three battle point ring plus ones. They give three BP each. Um, they're Having extra BP at the end of a run is just really useful. Like if you're say sitting in a zone farming the normal mobs for a drop and you haven't gotten it yet, then being able to get an extra 10 tries before having to start the journey back to the zone you're in can be really nice. Uh, 
and three XP gem twos are on here as well because I don't think it's really that important to have that bit of extra XP. But it's still pretty nice. I'd still recommend just getting everything on here. Um, although each XP two does cost a solid half a million gold, which it, it kind of sounds like more than it is. Like, don't worry too much about. Oh wow, these numbers seem big. Once you've got a few times played, you'll start seeing money times, I believe it's four or something, and money times seven. Money times seven is especially good. Like, if you've got money times seven in here, I mean, remember how I was getting like 10,000 per fight when I mentioned that last run? That's 70,000 gold per fight. If you get even like a four turn money times seven bonus in this zone, then that's instantly 280,000 gold, as, soon as long as you can survive in here. And that's huge, like, just getting a few money bonuses takes you pretty far in 2222, and they're not all that rare, especially because they're four different kinds of money bonuses, so you'll usually get them kind of often. And that's an HP gem one from Sphinx, not really that important, but drops are nice, can't complain. And yeah, I kind of, I feel like I've kind of explained everything about this whole step of the game um, already. What you're kind of doing now is just sitting around here and getting the things listed here until you have them all. You can skip these if you want. Um, you can, I mean, you can kind of skip everything on this TXT, but if you're new to the game, I wouldn't recommend it. I recommend just gearing up like really solidly really well before moving on because otherwise like you might not have as much BP to get the following stuff and like the runs that come after gold farming just probably won't be as comfy and as nice to play through will be harder at least so yeah I feel like I should probably shut up for a few minutes but I'm not sure I'm not sure what exactly to do or what to say, I guess. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not getting that lucky with uh, money bonuses. Damn. I think on your first few runs only money times two and times three are available. Um, as in literally until you have a few times played like on your statistics screen. Some of the money bonuses literally cannot spawn anywhere. They're not in the... they're not able to be rolled for um, when a bonus is being generated. But I mean if you want you could honestly just do whatever for a few runs and then once you see a money times seven actually i can just check how much it uh how much it is or how much play count you need the spreadsheet's about to come up here does it cover a drop no it doesn't okay so um where is it bonus so this is the almanac this is a massive spreadsheet that has a dumbass amount of information so can i okay so Alright, I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna get a screenshot of this. So, screenshot this if you want, whatever. So, here it is. If you have finished less than six games, you won't be able to get money times seven. If you have less than four, you also won't be able to get times four. So, um, yeah, it seems like money times four unlocks when you have four times played, four completed runs, and money times seven unlocks once you have six completed runs. So maybe you'll kind of just want to go for like the smaller things, the like lower money requirements until you hit like six play count because money times seven really is amazing. Um, so just get like your like your encounter reductions, your a couple movement ones Really, you're just trying to get as much as you can per run, because, 
like the last run the last runs you can do this in the better but I mean if you take like one run per item it's kind of it's okay it's not really a big deal because you'll you'll get them with like too much effort this is this is pretty much the easiest part of the whole game because like you're not relying on drop rates or any RNG like that money bonuses are about as much luck as you need and that's not very hard luck to come across. Oh, and there's magic armor. So why magic armor is something you want. Um, so my current armor is 145% defense. Percent is, per like generally speaking, a lot more important than the base. Although the base is still pretty important for like the first fight or two of a run. Um, 280%. That is a lot more than 145. And you can see here, obviously it's good to select an item. Um, and then you can see the kind of comparison of what it would give you. And then what your current armor or weapon gives you. You can do this with weapons as well, obviously. And that is 4,500 extra defense. So that's... I mean, that's over one and a half times what I had. So that's really good. Um, but the thing is, you're not always just going to be using only one weapon and only one armor. Um, skill armor is probably still going to be worth equipping for me. If, like, say this run just ended and I got no more, more upgrades, I'd probably want skill armor for the first, like, fight or two of a run. Because usually really high percent armor and weapons early game have very little flat. Um, so, I mean, this is five. This gives, let's say I have zero defense at all from any other source. This gives me 14 defense. This gives me, I don't know, over a thousand. So, and you're a lot closer to zero total defense at the start of a run than any other time. Usually after one or two fights, you've got enough extra stat points and you've got enough extra HP, attack, and defense that you can kind of just equip your percent stuff and it's better unless it's like really close but usually it's just swap to your base each or swap to your base attack weapon your base defense armor for the first like two fights of a run and then swap back to your percent stuff from then until the end of the run or until the start of the next one and trident is kind of in between those two rules, like it's got a lot of percent compared to anything else that you'd find at, by this point in the game, but it's also got a decent amount of base attack. Like if you're equipping it at level zero, no attack gems, you're not going to have like 18 total attack. Uh, if I remember right, it's something like 1800 base attack and 230 percent. Um, I can't remember entirely if that's right, but. We'll see when I get it. I might at some point, um, if these runs just take too long, just skip to whenever I get Trident. Uh, obviously, question marks here. I got Grip B, which is the grip that doesn't all look like kind of succubus looking figures, doesn't all look like, like samurai, like armored looking figures. Uh, that is the group that gives the most gold out of the three, and they give a whole lot of gold. I mean, the enemy I fought from the question mark group was the one that gives the least, and that already gave me like 63k, I think it was. Kind of unlucky there, only got one question mark mob out of the four turns, but it's still worth it. I got, like, four or five normal fights worth in that one fight that I got lucky, so. Right, so I have well over 300k, so I can unlock set 2 now. Um, I'll unlock it with a couple BP left. Uh, like, yeah, to say two fights from now. And I'll just 
unlock the set, and then kind of demonstrate what you use it for. I have enough for two encounter reduction rings, um, along with the set to unlock itself. So that's the first couple items you'll put in your movement set. So for a movement set actually, um, not all the kind of movement items are equal. And kind of reduction is the best one. You'll get the most extra distance um, with the same amount of gauge as you would if you just had no item. Basically it's just better. Like, if you only have one slot left in your movement set and you want to equip the best movement item you have and you have encounter reductions, movement gems, and movement gem ones, you want an encounter reduction, even though it costs less than movement ones. So I'm gonna equip a couple things here. Uh, when you're buying a new set, remember to um, correct your weapon and your armor. Remember to make those um, not the starting ones of the game. So I have 20,000 gold left. Now, this isn't something you ultimately, ultimately want to be using on your run set, like for the rest of the game, but movement gems plus zero also exist, and they're only 10,000 each, which is very, very little, so they're still useful. Um, so I've got set two equipped here. Uh, you can click between these to change sets, and look at this. Look at the gauge. I'm moving around like a decent amount, not like, wow, I'm flying across the map. But this is nowhere near a full run set, and if I swap back to set one, look how much faster the gauge feels. Like, and again, that's only four slots that I've actually got run set items in. So it's huge. Like if you're going to get one thing from gold farming and then just, you know you're gonna lose all your patience and just move on, make sure what you get is a run set. It doesn't even have to be a completed one, but six accessory slots and have in your run set three encounter reduction rings, and then like three movement gem plus zeros, if you really can't wait to even get plus ones. But you're gonna want plus ones eventually, since there are no better movement items that you can't buy with money. So, in terms of just straight up movement speed, for your six main slots, there you can equip movement items in two of the bottom row slots. Um, why you can't equip, you know, three encounter reductions, three movement gems, three movement gem ones is these bottom row slots can't hold just every item in the game. They're kind of restricted, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, so, yeah, that's the second kind of gold farming run done, and now I've got a movement set, a pretty simple one, not complete at all, but a movement set. So I have over 50,000 gold left, so I'm gonna get a third and kind of reduction and replace the one of the movement gems with it. So now I'm actually gonna swap to skill armor on this set. I'm not gonna bother a lot of the time making weapon and armor changes between runs on this set, on movement set, because you never have a movement set with the intention of getting random encounters on it. You just want to run from place to place without encounters, that's the point of it, right? Uh, and a good practice is to swap to your running set before hitting the title screen button, um, because the game actually stores which set you had swapped to on the game over screen. So if I swap to set one here and I hit title, when I start the next run, I'm going to be using, I'm going to have set one already equipped. But if I swap to set two, and you'll immediately be able to tell because the gauge just fills way slower. And that's a video ad. Ah, uh, lord. I should really like just actual, actually get editing software or something so I can just cut stuff like that out. But I just can't be bothered. Uh, so no, we move around pretty fast, and gauge doesn't fill very fast. I say pretty fast, but of course ads just kill this game for no reason. Kill, they seem to kill everyone's frame rate that gets them. Uh, yeah, the latest update also made it, as far as I can tell, basically impossible to dodge ads, which, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I want to support the dead. It kind of sucks, because the ads actually make the game slower. They, they might not for you, they d 
probably don't for everyone, but at least for me personally, my game runs like clearly slower when there's an ad up here. Video ads never seem to do much to the speed the game runs at. Um, and also, a good thing about running set is you can now just get from here to here, and you're not like guaranteed to get an encounter. You don't have to like entirely fill up your encounter gauge just to make this run. Um, <laughs> speaking of filling the encounter gauge, so that is, I mean, that's usually just called like a full gauge or something. I mean, people don't care about it very often or very much because it doesn't really happen that often. Um, I never actually knew an enemy in this zone could drop steel sword. That's kind of weird to me. That's new to me. Um, full encounter gauges are very, very rare. Actually, <laughs> like it's hard to get that gauge to 100% without getting a random encounter at some point. That's actually, <laughs> I'm impressed. Like, I would say you can play for like a full day and it'll happen. Mm. You can play a full day and not see it at all. Like, <laughs> that was actually kind of insane timing that that just happened to happen when I mentioned that. Uh, I kind of barely lived there, but now that I know I can, I'm gonna stat use extra stats for one more fight because I'm pretty sure that the Trident mob, the one that drops Trident, actually has a chunk higher attack. So if it were that enemy, I probably would have lost that fight, so I shouldn't stop statting yet. I shouldn't stop statting like HP, attack, defense. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'm, I'll be safe. Not just because of the at half attack bonus, because I think I'm probably fine for any enemy that comes up. With or without any sort of combat bonus. And I'm gonna kill Sphinx here and take approximately like four hours to do it. Probably because this game just runs so goddamn slow with the heads. Uh, also, Christmas is kind of soon. Uh, so for Christmas, I'm doing a thing. Pretty cool thing, actually. So I'm gonna be at least attempting to kill Hard Mode Michael, the basically hardest boss in the entire game. Well, apart from the new one that they added in Twilight. Uh, but it's basically impossible to ever kill, like, without just incredible RNG. But I've got a half attack bonus on Michael, and I've got a run good enough that I have a decent chance of killing him on that half attack bonus. Uh, and, I mean, if I get insane luck, I could get a wing armor 1 drop out of it, uh, which is the only item left in the game that I don't have on my main save, or on any save. Um, only like three people have ever gotten Wing Armor Plus One. Like, if I get it, it's gonna be completely huge. I'll be streaming it in the voice chat in the IRPG Discord. So, I mean, if you're interested in that, I'll link the server again. Or I'll link an invite to the server in the video's description. And you can join, because that's only in 15 days. Christmas is pretty close. Halloween is coming and the goose is getting fat. Oh, uh, oh that's, it's not Halloween. Um, okay, this this looks closer a bit than I thought. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna get lucky enough there and get Trident. So Trident's a big upgrade, I'm pretty sure. Uh, not actually a big upgrade, because Battle Axe does a 5k flat attack, which is pretty good. And the, the percent isn't, like, non-existent. Trident is, like, Magic Armor is definitely the bigger upgrade of the two. But Trident is still pretty good. Like, you're gonna want Trident Magic Armor before moving on. So... Yeah, these fights are so slow. I might just cut um, the video into just kind of parts, just where, like, things are happening, but I probably have to ask someone else to edit to do that, because I just don't know how. I could probably just, like, open up Cheat Engine or whatever and just speed hack the game to two times speed. But I don't, I don't really want to do that. Though. Actually, if you really don't want banner ads, what you can kind of do is just. So I'm gonna close the game. Now, if you exit a run and you go to title screen in the middle of a run, you don't actually. The run doesn't end. You just stop playing it at the time. So what I can do is just. 
reopen the game. Now, I have connection off. Um, later on, you're going to want Wi-Fi on no matter what. Like, you're not really going to be able to play without it. But as long as the internet connection isn't up, then what are ads going to do? Load? Ads come from the internet. Just like everything else that's bad. So you can just turn off your internet connection on your device and until you re-enable it while playing you won't get them though I'm not exactly sure how like kind of ads interact with when you turn the internet connection on and off so you might want to experiment with that yourself I can't say for sure now that something's changed but I'm pretty sure if you put if you bring your connection back up at any point and then obviously go into the game for a solid few seconds, then you'll have at least the kind of banner ads at the top or bottom of your screen for the rest of the app session. So as long as you continue to have the game open at all, like until you close and reopen it fully, um, those ads will still be there. I'm pretty sure. Um, what it used to be was it seemed like basically the game checked for a connection when you opened it. And then if it didn't get that connection, it completely give up on trying to load banner ads. And so if you had no internet connection when you opened the game and just let it run through that and fail to load ads, then it wouldn't try to load those ads for the rest of the time you have the game open um, until you obviously reopen it and start playing again. So that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, got an exclamation mark bonus for her exclamation mark bonus in here. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the difference the luck makes, by the way. Um, this shadow mob and the uh, that shadow mob I just killed and the other shadow mob I killed near the start of the video, um, I'm pretty sure dropped the same amount of base gold. I think it's 5,000. Um, but either way, the first time around that one dropped 6,000 earlier on, and I just got 14,000 from that. So I'm getting over double the money here from only a couple thousand luck. But it doesn't scale like that forever. Like, if you have 10 million luck, you are not getting, like, a million gold per fight from something that drops 5,000 base. Right. Let's see. Oh, so this is going to be question marks grip B, which is huge, because that they give a lot of money. No, oh, no. That's, like, the first decent money bonus I've gotten on there. Really just having to make it tough for me. So... Yeah. Um, question mark bonuses... Uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna sit in here. Um, question mark bonuses, unless there's like a good money bonus in here, are worth taking even if they're in other zones, because, I mean, you can potentially get like... I think the right grip B mob will probably give you like 200,000 gold in one fight, which is like a pretty big cash injection right there. Um, I mean, you have like... 30 BP by the time you get to desert once you have a couple things from there. So a couple hundred thousand gold in one fight is a lot of the progress that you need in a tiny amount of the BP that you have. Unless you're going for something that you really don't need to gold farm from here. Like, I mean, the bottom row slots are cost... Two of the bottom row slots cost three and a half million gold, and then the other two cost five million gold. You're not getting that from here. Like, you probably could if you get enough, like, question mark grip B spawns, but you're not. That's a jib trident, uh, unless you get hilariously lucky. So don't bother with stuff like that. And I almost rated the game. Uh, I rated it, um, well, what I rated depends on how lucky I've been getting. If, is the game nice to me? Five out of five. Is it, have I gotten... Um, no drops in the past 10 runs, 0 out of 5. Below 1. Uh, so, I think this is actually the first time I've gotten a duplicate, or a second one, copy of an, a weapon or armor. So, to briefly explain what this does, um, you can get gyps of weapons and armors. It's never worth farming. It's never worth farming, to get that out of the way. Um, basically just add some to the weapon or armor's stats. But, with each copy of a weapon or armor that you already have, including just the first one, the drop rate of any future ones reduces by a lot. Um, even just the second copy 
like number two of a weapon or armor has 0.55 times the first one's drop rate. So I actually got pretty lucky getting that second try. Um, like it's half the drop rate of the first one. Uh, and then the third of something I believe is about 0.3 times. Uh, do not try to farm a 10 stack of anything, not even cookery knives. Cookery, okay, maybe cookery knives if you have a ton of time. Or like if you have a few hours and you're just really bored of everything else. Because the tenth copy of an item has, I believe, about a hundredth of the drop rate that the first one does. And the eighth and the ninth are pretty close to that. Like, it scales kind of weirdly, but yeah, basically, getting copies 8 through 10 of an item takes about 400 times the, like, luck, gen like, the real life luck, generally speaking, of getting just the first one. Like, a few hundred. Like, you're probably going to spend the amount of time you took for the first one a few hundred times over. It's just not worth it. And then, I mean, even if you're farming, like, 10 of cookery, 10 cookery knives, you're getting 10% extra to that weapon's attack percent. Why do I... That's just a random knocks feature. That wasn't something I meant to touch. Didn't do anything. So, the first jip of an item is the best. It's the most beneficial. So, you get... The weapons, the weapon or armor's hundreds digit of its percent times two. So, um, if this was like three hundred and fifty percent, then this would be plus six percent. Um, the third through tenth of something give just one times that amount. So this, if I get a third, I'll be up to plus six percent. Um, yeah. It's not that important, really. Don't worry about it at all. Maybe worry about it when you're at endgame, but by that point, you'll know what you're doing. And you'll know whether it's, like, reasonable for you, because by the time you're late enough that jip farming your weapons and armors is a thing, you'll probably be thinking, like, am I gonna care about this game for the next, like, months and months? Because that's how long s stuff can take in late game. It's not like you can you can't enjoy this game if you don't play it forever, but yeah. Like if you want to get very, very far into this game, it just takes a lot of time. Even if you know everything, you're gonna have to kill things a lot of times to get their drops. And later on, like bosses that you have to farm take like 20 minutes, half an hour to kill. Just once. For like a 1% or something drop rate. The drop rates of items early on in the game are way way better than any other point in the game. Straight up. Uh, it's not like they completely suck later on but like 1 point, 1 point something percent drop rates are very much a thing. Um, most of the way through. Um, and you can see I've gotten a chip of magic armor there. I'm just thinking, what should I buy? So I have 600,000 gold. That's a decent amount. Uh, accessory slots are a pretty high priority, but I don't have much that's good to put in them, is the thing. So I'm not sure if that will be worth it immediately. I'm going to buy three XP gem plus ones. And equip them into this set. This, oh my god. Remember, if you select a slot... If you want to buy an accessory, select. If you want to buy an accessory and equip it right now, select the slot. Like, click on the slot to get in the um, accessory shop that you want to replace. So I had an XP gem here, right? And I and I'm like, okay, I want to buy an XP gem one and put it in this place. So I just select it, and then it replaces it right away. Let's see if you like buying something in that. Like, if I bought recovery. Or, or no, if I like had recovery in here, right, and I accidentally replaced it with an XP one, I wouldn't notice. You don't notice these things. Like forgetting things is something that happens all the time in this game. So just like try to um, get around the fact you might forget stuff. And I'll buy a movement gem plus one here. Um, and that gives me six total movement items. So at this point, if I can unlock the fifth and sixth accessory slots, my movement set is kind of good enough. Uh, I'm just going to take the last fight in here, and I'm going to call it here for this video, and 
I'm gonna just off, like, off the record, just gold farm up all the remaining stuff in this video. So, you can get a lot more gold than I got this run, because I can't get money times fours yet, I can't get money times sevens yet. It takes a solid few runs, and I've gotten a character level here. Those aren't all that important. Um, I think I mentioned them in the first episode, but I'm not sure. But either way, it's not that important. So Trident, I don't really have to replace between runs, because it's got enough base attack that... Like, it's okay. I can use it for the first couple fights. I don't have to, like, put on an attack jam or another weapon with higher base. Um, magic Armor, though, I mean, it's that's still only, like, a couple hundred defense. And now I have a thousand. Uh, probably a good time to stop this video, because my sister's spam calling me, I don't know why. Um, so, yeah. Uh, just get all this stuff. Now, I, I got the screenshot of the enemies from a really useful site. Uh, it's just called the IRPG map. Um, Theo made it. Um, Theo from the IRPG Discord, and it's really, it's really useful. So you can kind of, you can ch choose between hard mode and normal mode. Let's say like, this guy drops Trident plus one in hard mode actually. He drops Trident, pl Trident plus zero in normal mode and attack gem one. And then you can look at everywhere else. So you can look at, say, the maze, which comes later. Yeah, this place is pretty big, uh, but you get there a decent bit later. For now, you can just, you know, look at these couple maps here. Uh, worlds are basically teleports. So when you kill the boss in here, uh, you get teleported to World 2. You get teleported to here in World 2, and it's like a darker looking, like, cursed graveyard. But you get there when you get there. Um, so this is a useful site. I'll link this in the description. You can click on a zone, click these little drop downs on any mob that has drops. If you're, say, in this random zone where no mob has drops, they won't have those drop downs. So you're not going to just like, like guess which things have items. Uh, if you see a drop down, then the thing has drops, and you can check what they are. Gives you some drop rates. Drop rates aren't as important as people usually seem to think they are. Just make sure you have some luck and your drop rates are going to be good enough. But, I mean, if you really want to know, like, it's fine. Just, you can check this site for at least rough drop rates. You can kind of estimate based on how much you have if you have, like, in between two and 25,000. Uh, but yeah, that's a really useful site. I'll link it in the description. Uh, <laughs> That's almost an iron knife, jeez. Feels worse than the first one, but I didn't make a script for this, because I'll see about backup restore stuff so that I can actually re-record and all that. Uh, but for now, it feels like runs kind of kind. Like, if I like say a bunch of dumb stuff for 30 seconds I, on the second run of this video, I can't really re-record it, because I don't have a one play kind backup to go to. <laughs> Um, so this was kind of done in one take. Sorry if it's pretty scuffed. I'll see if I can make things a bit less scuffed moving forward. It has been several months, so maybe I just couldn't be bothered. But yeah, I'll see you in two weeks, hopefully. I'll link the Discord server and the map. I think that's it. Uh, if there's anything else, then you'll see it in the description. But bye for now.